from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's Thursday Night Football. Case Keenum and the Atlanta Falcons. Well, we welcome all of our viewers inside a place that the folks around here like to call the Vault, and that's Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They're led out of the field by their quarterback, the former Houston Cougar, Case Keenum. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second ball. A two-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. From the gun on third down, Keenum. He's got his tight end fan. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So opening drive, third down, they go with a slant, it works. And I'm wondering when the league's going to figure it out because everyone throws it on third down. You expect pressure, so you want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback quickly. It's a three-step route ordinarily, and you're throwing it where you see the receiver breaking towards you. So it's an inside route. Everyone likes it, and it's executed very well. Throwing on first down is Keenum. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Brings up second and ten. Second and ten. Keenum here again. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot. Excellent coverage. Didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. They'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. So here are the Panthers under head coach Matt Rule. Leading them out, their second-year quarterback from Ohio State at 23 years of age, it's Dwayne Haskins. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and 
what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give a better chance to lead the team to wins. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? It's a, who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Haskins to throw. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. It's now second and six at the 39-yard line. They run Smallwood. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. He was brought down by Shaq Barrett. That's a gain of four. Brings up third and one. A run with Smallwood. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Well, that was big right there because they're the bottom five in the league and converting on third down. They needed that pick up in a big way. There were two things they said they wanted to win in this game. One, the turnover battle, and the second, third down conversions. So they got one there. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. Out of the shotgun, Haskins. Over the middle, he hits Austin. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 11 yards and a Panther first down. The 41 yard line. Now the former Notre Damer, this is CJ Procise. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Second and four. The last run got six, now second and four. Now Haskins to throw it. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. On the draw, it's Procise. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. So on fourth down, Matt Rule brings out the field goal unit. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game.
So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. Don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. He was looking for Quincy and Nunwa that time, and that'll bring up second down. And the pass complete to Anunwa and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and 10, Keenum out to his left. He's going to take off with it. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And finally marked down at the 23. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him. And he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. Keenum now on first down. He'll get this to Eckler. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll make it a second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 17-yard Draw play. It's Eckler, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. This defense is really flowing around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. From the gun, it's Keenum. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. First down, Falcon. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Now Eckler. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a five-yard pickup, so essentially they get the penalty yardage back, and it's back to second and ten. They'll try the air now with Keenum. 12-yard line being chased out left, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The sack by Dorian O'Daniel, the linebacker from Clemson. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. And certainly not an easy one on third and long. Shotgun snap for Keenum. Strong coverage by Carolina. And on we go to fourth down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. Panthers nothing. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you can get to the red zone, and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there, and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Haskins out of the gun. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Incomplete. It's now second and 10. The second down carry for Prosize. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Smallwood. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. down. Here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They've won two straight and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. to throw is Keenum. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Quentin Jefferson gets him for a loss of eight. What great push up front. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanking the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Now left side on the swing pass. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. 
A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. We call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brings up second. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. Out of the gun, Keenum. They'll roll him out right. He'll run it. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, here's Keenum. Escaping the pressure right. He'll try and run it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. Now it's Keenum. On the screen, this is Eckler. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. The gun on third down, Keenum. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 19. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. And oh, he coughed it up, and it's picked up by the Panthers. And he will take this all the way up past the 40-yard line. Complete. A fumble on the play, recovered by the defense. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision, because they do have the final call now. comes in inside of two minutes and it gets overturned and it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made now they have to flip back and start over okay brandon thanks very much we'll get back to you and cd in a minute first it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the nfl the best of the early games on sunday may just be in buffalo where the bills face a big test as they'll have to contend with the new england patriots in the late afternoon games, one of the best of the bunch will be at Soldier Field in Chicago, where it'll be the Bears taking on the New Orleans Saints. And then on Sunday night, the national audience in for a treat. They've got a good one lined up between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. In the game you're watching, Case Keenum has been the star of the first half. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game as we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. 
And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Panthers take over first and 10. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. And maybe time for this offense to really hit the reset button. They were shut out in the first half, but still, they're right in this game. They certainly are. What I like about it is that you actually continue to play. You know, you just find a way to make a few plays yourself, and you noted it. Right there on the border in this game, they're not that far off. Just got to find a play or two, and they could be very happy at that point. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. From the gun, it's Haskins. Trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Andrew Adams. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Falcon defense has a touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. On the return, the Panthers take over first and 10. At their own. The Panthers now set to take over offensively. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the gun, Haskins. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. They give to Smallwood. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. In second and eight. Going right back to Smallwood. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Running lives right a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. And off comes to Smallwood. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From just shy of midfield, Haskins, short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Third and one. Operating from the gun, Haskins. 
And the throw there going to be incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Carolina. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin quarter. They're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. Now Case Keenum and the offense heading back onto the field. And he's been fun to watch run the football. We know he can pass, but using his legs effectively here in this one. No doubt about it. Watch him maneuver in the pocket, out of the pocket, making the plays that he's making, which are breaking down the defense. I thought back to when we had our morning jog before the game, and I couldn't keep up with you. Those legs, they're valuable for his team. He's got his big tight end fan. And he'll go down for a loss inside his own five at the four. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Well, if you're going to turn things around in a game like this, Charles, those are the kind of plays that you need. And I just love the way that defense rallied to the football on that one. They got the completion, but he was smothered behind the line of scrimmage. And when you make tackles like that, your whole defense is going to be fired up. Really nice play getting to the ball. On second down, Eckler. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. Well, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. Once more, here's Eckler. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. But just like you said, they've got the lead, don't do anything silly, run the football, and that's what they did. They would have liked to have created a little more room for their punter, but he'll take what they gave him, and he'll go out there now and try and get the ball off and help his defense. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. The Carolina offense about ready to go. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. He hits his running back, Crosize. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. He was taken down. Final minute now of the third quarter. A gain of nine brings up second and from the 22. Haskins firing quickly here, and that's complete. That's good. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and ten at the 17. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. John Hightower, his first NFL reception goes for six. And the Panthers are able to get this back within a touchdown. Well, there you go, Charles, his first touchdown pass of the new season. Well, let's just go back to his rookie year because he's able to get his feet wet, right, get a little bit of experience. Now I think here in year two, the game will slow down for him, and we'll see his true talents come out. Extra point attempt here still to come. 
And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. Five plays there on that drive. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Just a three-point game now as they send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. At their own 27-yard line. Keenum now on first down. And that's into the hands of Eckler. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. The Falcons on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third down and 12. This is the tight end fan. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Atlanta. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and 10. A nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. From the gun, Haskins. The left side caught by Diggs. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Step on Diggs. It's a gain of eight. Brings up second and two at the 45-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Operating from the gun, Haskins. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 43. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Now a dump off here, complete. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Throwing again, here's Haskins. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a first down on a gain of 10. 
first and 10 at the 29-yard line. Haskins going to throw again. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Second and five at the 24-yard line. Haskins back to the air. He's going to go up top for the end zone. Haskins pass. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this when I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Wendell Smallwood, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Panthers have taken the lead. What a great drive that was. A long drive, sustained, well executed. I love what we're seeing out of him here in year two, right? This young quarterback continues to evolve and grow. He's really the adage right now that John Wooden, a famous basketball coach, used to say. Be quick, but don't hurry. You can see that everything is happening for him, but he's not taking it at a pace that he can't sustain. And that makes it 14-10. So that drive in total eight plays. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Falcons 10. Kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken in at the three. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. At their own 27 yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. On first and 10, here's Keenum. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 27. Intended for Kiki QT. Joe Hayden on the coverage. A shotgun snap for Keenum. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. I like what they did there because many of the deep throws we see in the course of a game come to the outside, the perimeter of the field. In this case, they used a slot receiver to run deep downfield and tried to connect that way. Unsuccessful in that attempt, but I like what they were doing. A short game that doesn't get them the first down, brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here again comes Dwayne Haskins and company. And after the slow start, the numbers show he has really straightened things out. How often sometimes is that that you come into a game and the defense is game planned a little differently than you expected? More often than maybe people realize, so adjustments are often a big part of each and every game, and it's not just getting to halftime. It's series to series to make it work, and being able to hang in there when there's a little adversity early and see them able to flip it around, it's kind of gratifying for a team to watch, especially for a coach. The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Haskins will throw. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's 
Smallwood. He's got it on the draw. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Again, it's Smallwood. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a handoff here to his running back. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they'll indeed take a knee. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. He was brought down by Adrian Fulbert. It's a gain of six. Brings up third and six. Haskins down to a knee, and his guy's about to come away victorious. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win, needed one desperately. Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? You know, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. So for the Panthers, they'll finish the first half of the schedule dead even at 4-4. Four and four. And now they'll have a few extra days here before they face Kansas City next week. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, the struggles intensify as they drop to 2-6 and six now on the year. And they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Denver Broncos. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.